Well, welcome to day fourth of our retreat, Rebirth, A New You. For those of you who are viewing our retreat uh, on Facebook, uh, just, and you're a first timer, just be aware that I don't have access to that platform. So I'm only communicating with our participants from the Zoom, Zoom uh, platform. And if you do want to communicate with me and ask your questions, uh, then I would recommend you sign up through our website, zaratustra.tv, and uh, join the Zoom meeting. Um, Mr. Amir, if you get a chance and check our emails and see if there's any last moment person trying to get on and they're having a hard time, please. Sure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so today is day four. I have still some people jumping in, so I'm going to wait for another maybe 30 seconds. Um, A part of, of the rebirth of being born, renewing, is that we go through the different stages. And rebirthing is similar to a snake shedding its, its skin. So... If you imagine, if you've seen any snakes, that they're losing their old skin. So they're, I'm not a fan of snakes. I don't really like snakes, to be honest with you, but um, you see the snake is moving and it's moving through, it's kind of weird because there's like two snakes and one is coming out of the other one. So it's shedding the old skin and coming out of it. And you can only imagine if that's you, you would be very frightened for the first time because you're letting, you're coming out of a part of yourself. And it must be very scary for the first time when you're doing it. Similarly, when a caterpillar is trying to turn into a butterfly and it's struggling and it's struggle trying to break through out of the cocoon and if you're observing it you may think you want to pop the cocoon with the needle and let the butterfly out to help it but actually if you do that you're going to kill the butterfly because in that struggle that is pressing against the cocoon to break through its body is producing certain hormones. And if you make it easy, it will not have those hormones and it will die. It won't be able to break through and it won't be able to fly. So it needs those juices to be produced through the struggle that it's trying to break through. Okay? So the same thing is here that you may be experiencing a very strong struggle that you're trying to break through. And there's this weird period that is happening that it's dark, it's confusing, the outer world is weird, your inner world is weird, you're isolated, all of a sudden a lot of your friends don't want to get together with you because of the COVID. So, and if you're a little bit different, you find that you find yourself more isolated because of what is going on. So there is this struggle is happening inwardly of figuring out this weird transition of not knowing where you're at. But I can assure you that's a process of 
shedding the old skin and the old one is falling off for the new one to come. And of course, it is sort of unknown and unpredictable because you have no idea what the new is going to be, how it's going to be like. So naturally, you'll be frightened and confused. It's a natural process. It will happen. And of course, we're putting light on your path, on this path of helping you, making sure that you have an understanding of the internal process that you're going through in rebirthing and reborning. In every process like that, especially on a spiritual process, is that if you approach it from the Advaita point of view, if you approach it from a fifth dimensional quantum awareness point of view, then you will understand that same story, it's not an really an intellectual understanding of what is going to happen, even though we're using our intellect continuously and our mind is in the process of working and wants to understand. And sometimes, yes, it's good to feed it a little bit and give it something to chew on because otherwise it will go crazy. It's like a dog. You have to let the dog bark every once in a while. You can't just shut it down all the time. So the, I can talk about the in, intellectual understanding part of it, but that's only a point of reference. It's not it. What it is, is that you are in a womb and you're in the nothingness, you're in the darkness, you're in this place. It's a waiting period. And it's not this and it's not that. And you're developing internally, moment by moment, like a child is being developed in the mother's womb. Normally it takes nine months for it to develop completely. We're not gonna talk about the exceptions. That's what it is. So the same process of awakening into a new you, it's got that waiting period that you're going through that and for everybody is different. Some people, it may take a lifetime. It all depends on where you are on your evolutionary will, where you're standing. And also, what is your internal process? How much you're willing to accept as far as letting go of the ideas of what you have, of what you used to be. That's a very scary part because a lot of people come and say, oh yeah, I'm willing to let this go, let that, da, 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 da. but this one, I want to hang on to. So the ideas of the person you are, it is a formation of thought process, basically, of accumulated years of thoughts. And it goes into thousands of years ago of when humans started to develop thinking thinking process. Something that evolution created, a thinking process. And in that thinking process, what happens is 
duality begins to appear. There is a sense of separation begins to appear. And as we enter into this place, time is created with space. So there is time and space. But when you're in silence, it's very clear if you have the right education and you pay attention, you see very clearly in going into deep silence when there is no thought processing, time and space disappear. You enter into a vastness or into a space that it's infinite. It's here and it's way bigger than your mental process. Because mind activities stop or you were able to go beyond the mind into the unified field of the oneness, that which is always here. It stops, everything stops. Senses are alert, maybe hearing noises or body sensations, you may be experiencing them, but the more you disassociate and from the thinking process, the more you disassociate from the ideas of your heart, the more they start shedding and falling off these ideas, whatever idea you have, how society should be, how spirituality should be, how a spiritual teacher should be, I, a spiritual seeker should be. How should anything be? What, what are things supposed to be? How should they be? Look at your society where you live. The rules, how it is. What defines any of them? What why are they the way they are? Why should be, you should be that way? Why you should be following any of it? And what you follow in a certain society and it's legal and acceptable, it's completely unacceptable and illegal in another society. If you grow up in the West, it's completely okay to, for example, drink alcohol. Women, they don't have to cover themselves. In summertime, they can walk around on the street in a bikini or a mini skirt or half naked and nobody cares. But if you live in a Muslim country or in Saudi Arabia, you'll get your hands cut off or you definitely will be beaten up for walking around half naked or drinking alcohol. So which one is the right way? Which one is right? So ideas are bounding you into an old self, something that you think you should be. And the list goes on and on and on and on. You can apply it to every different facet of life. From spirituality to non-spirituality. Like, okay, I'm a spiritual being and 
I shouldn't be drinking alcohol, smoking cigarette, having sex, blah, 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 this, that, all the ideas of being spiritual. Those are ideas too. And of course, some of them are good ideas. They help you be clear and be able to continue, but do they define your inner world? Do they define the level of awareness you have arrived to? Can you go beyond that? The idea that you have to go to school and then get a college education or work or get married and have kids, even though biologically for many women, that's what it's sticking in their bodies, but why do I have to follow them? Why do I have to follow what everybody else does? Isn't that an idea too? You can just look around and examine yourself and see all the rules and laws that you're living by and abiding by. They have been implemented on you. It's an idea. It's a concept. Has formed into a society throughout thousands of years of thinking or feeling a process that has manifested itself in a form, in a way of life. Well, you want to be reborn, so And you are in this cocoon, in this stage, this process of struggling to come into the new life, being born. So do you want to bring these old ideas, concepts, systems with you? Or you want to develop a new you that it's up functioning pure, purely on intuition, functioning on a new system. It's a transformation from the head to the heart, a new way of intuitive knowing. Yes, of course, there's the new you and you're living and you're implementing. Yeah, when you go on the street, you're gonna have to put your clothes on, otherwise you will be arrested. Of course, you can't go on the street naked in most societies. Of course, you have to still follow certain ways, but I'm talking about internally freeing yourself internal freedom and and being born into a version of yourself that's supreme a version of yourself that has transcended a lot of the weaknesses or weak points that we've been bound by, our jealousies, our angers, our sense of loneliness, worthless, transforming into this other part of you, whatever that is, it's energetic, it's healthy, it's athletic, it's different, it's motivated, it creates a new way of being, 
by breaking through the old habits, old ways of being. It's all possible and it happens every day. It's a part of the function of life, but it's not the mental. Mentally, we've tried to do it and we haven't been able to do it. How many times I've tried to, I don't know, do a new program, losing weight or going exercising or changing diet or changing a habit of not being so dependent on people or not um, easily giving up to a romantic situation. I don't know, different stories, the different stuff that we are different people struggling with different things. I know my own things, I don't know about you, but, but mentally, it's not a mental process to change it because you've tried it and it doesn't work many times. Maybe mentally in a mental way, intellectual way, there's an understanding that change needs to is coming, but then the rest of it, it comes to a vibrational change, a shift in your vibrations, entering into a different frequency, a higher frequency. And vibrational changes they are not mental. They cannot happen through mental exercise. That's why it's not working simply. It's in the absence of mental exercise. It's in the absence of an activated mind. Non-activation. Means you're not thinking. You're quiet. And in that quietness, something much bigger takes over. Way, way bigger. An intelligence that knows all takes over and a birth, a new birth starts to happen into this vastness of presence in this emptiness because there's no thoughts and then creation creates on its own terms, it generates and give birth. But it's not done through human thinking process because it's a mess. Human thinking process is a mess. It makes everything messy because it's all coming from fear, worry, anxiety, and a sense of separation, and what do I get? We don't want that. That doesn't take us anywhere. Are you here? Yeah, are you with me? Or you're falling asleep? Okay, good. 
Yes, we are. Okay, good. How are you doing, Kim? Is that you? Yes. Yes, I'm good. Thank you. I your voice. I, I missed yesterday because I had an appointment. It's okay, honey. It's all right. Mm -hmm. For a moment, envision a different version of yourself. Whatever that is. And you can be wild in your imagination. Whatever you want to envision. Envision a different self, yourself. What would you like to be? What qualities do you want to have? What do you want to look like? A lot of people start with that. But look at your quality, the qualities that you want to develop. Kind of examine these qualities that you would like to develop to be and see yourself as that for a moment. And isn't that also an idea? So when you envision that, after that, you see whatever that you wish to see, experience, where you think you would be better, more happy, or whatever. Whatever is your desire, your idea, your vision. And hold that mental image for a moment. See that. In any way, mentally, emotionally, physically, however you like, you see that. And when you're fully seeing it, I would like you to embody it and move into that. move into that version of yourself as if, as if you're shape-shifting. And see yourself as that. Now examine the qualities that you have and taste the qualities. Check out those qualities you would like to have. Whatever quality that is. Or certain things that you want to let go and you don't like them. Okay, can you be the new person without those things? Can you? Examine yourself without those things. Is it possible? Even in your imagination, can you do that?
Now let that one go too and dive into silence, dive into yourself, dive into this moment. And as you dive into this moment here, you're re-emerging and surrendering to what is and what is here, right now, in total silence and being still, you encounter the source of creation. that it always creating itself. From here. And it gives you a very good glimpse and taste of a different version of yourself. Because you're diving into your higher self. You're diving into the oneness, the vastness of the being.
It's kind of like you're fading away into the background. The background is there. The street noise, the light, sounds of refrigerator in your house, the fire truck on the street. But you're kind of fading. Yet the background is there.
So when you are diving back into the purity, the essence of the self, into the unified field of the oneness. So you come to the source of creation because you come into the presence and the vastness, the greatness, the big kahuna appears. You dive into it. It's here. Always here. Always accessible. When you come back and here it is. And it takes over. You have illuminated, dissolved into the background and re-emerging from this place. And it's from this place that a new you is being born. It's like a brand new child without any ideas, with a clear mind, no concepts, no do's or don'ts. No rights or wrongs. So do you see how it just happened? How the process is taking place?
by shifting your attention. You're shifting your attention. Your attention is going into being quiet. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Anything you want to share or ask a question? Uh, can you hear me? Do, do you hear me? Yeah, okay, you can hear me. Good. So. Yeah, okay. Can, yeah, I ask, can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. Who is yeah. this? Um, okay, yeah, go ahead. Yesterday I uh, said something about competeness. To be competitive or not competitive. Okay. Uh, in my meditation earlier today, I had the same thing. Uh, impress or not impress, and uh, then I, it came to my mind that uh, the end of uh, duality, the list of duality, is endless. Um, and you talked also about duality. Then again, you said something about separation. Uh, could you please elaborate a little bit about these two? Okay, I didn't hear everything you said. So, okay. okay. So yesterday I talked about oneness. Today I talked about separation. Is that... No, I, I talked about um, the duality of okay. to be um, competitive or not competitive. Okay. And uh, today I had in my meditation impress or not impress. So... Hold on. In your meditation... Imp today. Impress? And not impress. I don't understand. What do you mean impressed or not impressed? Um, to make an impression or not to make an impression? The duality. I don't understand. Okay. I, I don't understand your question. Okay. Um, but I understood that the list of duality is endless. Okay. And earlier today, you talked about duality and also you talked about separation at the same time. So my question is, uh, would you like to um, elaborate a little bit about duality and separation if there is a connection? Yeah, well, they're, they're both the same. Duality is another word for separation. I mean, oh, okay. duality is in essence, let's say white and black, day and night. So yeah. the dual, man and woman. Yeah. That's dual, that's two separate ones, two opposites. So it's, it is. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the duality of life. Mm -hmm. uh, good and bad, good and evil, yeah. love, love and hate, the duality of life. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have answered my question. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. I'm glad you asked. So that's, and then we have this sense of separation. We have this sense, I don't feel like I'm one with this phone. So we have the sense of it. But in the essence, when you dive back, like what we did um, moments ago, all sense of separation dissolves and disappears.
when you fall back. You go beyond the mind and you dive back into what is here all the time. It's the presence which is here. That which is always here. That which does not change. And from that comes creation. There's a solid background that is always there. And out of that solid background, it, things starts to appear out of it. There's just appearances coming out. Things appear and things disappear. So it's in your consciousness that you learn to be quiet. The more you're quiet, the more at the source base. And from that source base emerges a new you. Where does birth come from? When something's born, what makes it, what gives it birth? And, and you, right now it's springtime and everything is opening up, everything's coming out. There's a source to it. What is that source? Are you separated from it? You notice it. You intellectual, intellectualize it. That there is something. Oops. And uh, so we're just trying to understand it, but in the absence of the thinking process, trying to do things, trying to understand, trying to solve equations, in the absence of that one, when you go away from it, you fall back into this place. And it's blissful. Quiet. And from there comes everything. And I'm trying to help you all to recognize that place. It's the very substratum of everything. Recognizing it. Because the more you recognize it, the more you fall back into it, the more you lean back to it. And the more the quality of your life starts to change because you change. Is this making any sense to anybody? I don't know if I'm blah, blah, blah to myself or it's making sense. I don't know how else to explain it. I've learned to transmit it. But words are just referring to that place of creation. Anyone else? Any other question? Anybody wants to? Yeah. Hi, go ahead. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Right up? Yes. Yeah. 
mute. Okay, good. Do you hear me? Okay, I do. Un I do understand what you're saying. Um, I see it as a, like a unified field, uh, like a more of a, a state. Um, rather than a place, as it were, uh, you know, with with our being, it's hard to get words to describe mm -hmm. um, a state of being in oneness, I expect is a, as good as any, um, which I certainly do spend a fair amount of time there, but I, I unfortunately can't remain there, which I'm working towards and working on and whatever have you, but uh, I do your explanations of it, of uh, duality, etc. I, I do follow what you're saying and, and understand it and have experienced. Beautiful. Yeah. And uh, I guess how to always remain in that state, well, I don't know. One has to put effort, but also maybe, or, or maybe not effort, just uh, uh, remain. Stop, stop. stop. stop okay. right here. Hold on here. Okay. Yes. So this is where most spiritual seekers make a mistake. This is the downfall right here, what you said. To always stay, always staying in that state. Okay. Okay. That is, that place is the background. It's always there. So where the downfall of the average spiritual seeker is that they think that they continuously all the time, 24 seven a day, 24 hours, seven days a week, Con continuously, you have to be in this place. That is your background. It's already there. What happens is we notice it. We fall into it. And it appears as an experience. And then we get attached. And when you're not experiencing that, because you also have a human body, and the human body has senses, and it's dealing with everyday life. So the mistake is because you come to a human body and deal with your nervous system, you may get upset with your kids, or you may get angry or you may get happy or you may get sad or whatever means there is something wrong the idea what i'm trying to point out to all of you is to recognize that place recognize it that it's always here recognize that you are that but you don't necessarily has to be in this blissed out state every second of your life because then you're not going to be functioning into the world of duality. You are gone all the time. Someone has to take care of you 24-7 because you can't function any longer. But recognize the place as your background. Recognize it not mentally, not intellectually, as experientially when you fall back and see the vastness that appears, that you are the vastness. And then your consciousness merge into a human consciousness of a separate separation, but don't get fooled by that. Okay, that's much clearer for me. Also, I, I apologize, I, was, I missed the first hour because I had another appointment. So you may have explained that earlier. And if so, I, yeah, I, I actually apologize repeating. It's okay, honey, it's no problem. I'm glad you're asking your question. That's what I want to do is help helping you understanding 
that that space we're talking about is really who you are. It's always here. Yes. And recognizing it in the recognition of it, mm -hmm. you slip in and out of it much easier. It shows itself more and more. Eventually it will take over you don't have to worry about it to maintain it or not maintain it because it's already self-maintaining itself. It's maintaining you. It's maintaining me. Recognize that. It's always here. But the yes. mind comes and says, oh, I lost it. I lost it. I had it. I lost it. Oh, I, damn it. I lost it. Oh, I had it. I got it. The mind goes back and forth with it. Yes, I, I like that uh, sentence. It's maintaining me. That's a very profound statement, I think. Yeah, great. Yes. Yeah. It's that which runs your whole entire life because of that, so, but it's so close. It's so close, closer than your breath that it's, we miss it because you've always been in it all of your life. It's always been here. Mm -hmm. But now you're getting to the help or somehow existence is helping you, is pointing out to it. So you're starting to Notice it. It's been there always. Mm -hmm. And you have got blissed out many times because the mind disappeared. But when we're not properly educated, we're not trained correctly, we think it's something that comes and goes. We don't realize it's always there. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Much clearer. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Connie. Um, you said something about hormones. Um, that about, uh, about the what? Hormones, hormones, hormones. My in, yeah, my, my internet connection is very bad, very bad. I'm so maybe you can't hear me clearly, but you said something about when you go to this river, the snake and um, a, 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 a pillar, caterpillar, and uh -huh. you said something about the hormones that that. We couldn't um, force it. We had to be patient because we have these hormones to, to. Right. No, I'm referring to the worm. It's in its cocoon. It wants to. It's trying to break through this cocoon. Yeah. The caterpillar that turns to become a butterfly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it forms a cocoon on the outside and it's yeah. trying to break through. It's trying to struggling. If you're watching it, you're seeing it for a day or two, it's going to struggle or longer. Yeah. The whole time it's trying to break through. It's like, and you may feel sorry for it and say, okay, you know what? I'm gonna take a needle and puncture a hole into this cocoon so this poor thing can break through, okay? Yeah. Right. But what yeah. we don't realize through this struggle is pressing against to break through, 
by pressing against it, its body starts producing certain hormones. That those hormones are yeah. necessary for its growth to make it become a butterfly so it can fly. So yeah. if exp experiment and put it and cut through the cocoon, the actual worm, the caterpillar can never become a butterfly because it didn't mature through producing those hormones. By struggling, the hormones are being, being produced through the struggle. Yeah. Right. So, it, yeah, but it means that uh, to, to, to reach the oneness uh, and to, to get into that place, you have to have the, the um, how can I explain it? You have to do all the struggles before you can do it. Well, aren't you doing a lot of struggles spiritually in your life? Huh? Once again, please. Have you gone through spiritual struggle in this life? I think so, yes. You think so or you know? Yeah, but I don't know if, if they are spiritual. I mean, I have been through a, a lot of struggles, but I don't know if they are spiritual. Yeah, but the struggles to bring you to self-realization, to look for answers. Yeah. Life, yeah. Right? yeah yeah why what am i doing here why is it like this why why yeah. why why yeah same I've, thing I've, yeah okay i've had a lot yes <laughs> yeah it brought you to this point right you have come to yeah. this point. are you at the same place as you were 10 years ago no, no, not at all. No, your, your awareness has come to a different place. You have a different consciousness now. Your understanding yeah. has changed. Yeah. Hopefully increased. I imagine you have become wiser and you understand about the nature of existence more than 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Yeah. 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 Good. Thank you. You're welcome, Connie. So I, uh, is there any other questions before we finish up? So I was told by the management of the <clears throat> association here that next week there is going to be some construction. So I'm going to postpone the coming uh, workshop retreat of next week uh, to the following week, most probably, I would have to inform you to make sure that I can broadcast from here because uh, I have not been able to find another place to that I can rent it for four days in a row. Excuse me. Let me just turn this on. Yeah. So, uh, so that's one thing regarding the, the uh, workshop retreat next week. Um, so I'm postponing all the events for the time being and I would have to inform you. Um, <clears throat> we will uh, continue our work tomorrow. I don't know how many people were interested in participating into the next week, uh, reinventing yourself retreat, but uh, I don't know, we haven't 
but we are postponing it for now. And then I'll inform you probably the following week we're going to be doing it. Uh, also, uh, I'm announcing that this is the last season that I will be taking uh, uh, the one-on-one -on -one coaching, the live training program that I take private students and do a um, three-month training with them that I have been doing for past year. And uh, this is the last season that I will take students. So if you're interested, you're welcome to contact me and we'll set up a consultation time for you. And we talk about your needs. This is a one-on-one -on -one coaching tailor-made for your needs. Uh, it takes three months and uh, we go through various and different kind of exercises and practices. Uh, so this would be the last uh, season that I'm taking students for. So I'm just letting you know if you're interested, you may want to jump into it now. Other than that, we will resume tomorrow. So one uh, request I have from you is that don't right away jump on the phone or get into conversations and get on internet or whatever. Just take a few moments, five, 10 minutes, kind of sit with everything that you, we talked about and you feel like you've received things of value. Just stay with it, sit with it. Let things sink in and do reflect on it before you get engaged into any kind of conversation or involvement with anything else. Let things come to you, let them sink in. What did we talk about today? What did we receive? Did we realize anything? Is there anything of value in here that we discussed? And let it just sink inside you. Otherwise, if right away, we go into picking up the phone or talking or getting into watching the news or going online, you lose all these valuable things that you have, you may have received today. So hang in there a little bit. Okay, all right. If you have any comments, you're welcome to write to me at zaratustra.tv. Uh, this retreat is being offered to you. Uh, it's based on donations. Uh, if you feel compelled to help, uh, donate, donate generously. We appreciate it. Um, we're a small enterprise and we need help always so it's not a big big entity or major thing that is being supported it's being supported by you so i appreciate it sending you my love and light stay in your heart and i will see you tomorrow namaste